Bumio Masori, pro affirmative action student at both Duke and at UNC Chapel Hill. And I'm curious what your reaction is. I know that uh, you were hoping this would go the other way. What do you make of uh, what you've learned in their decision so far that they say can't uh, simply uh, be sort of a check mark based on identity but must be part of a student's uh, narrative, what they present to the school as, as part of their biography? Well, I would say that I'm, I'm disappointed, but I'm not surprised. When we talk about holistic admissions, to say that you can include a student's identity, the student, the person behind the papers and the grades and the test scores, that you're not allowed to include race, which is such an encompassing part of at least my identity as an underrepresented minority, it, it makes me feel upset. We know what happens when affirmative action goes away from universities. We can look at California, we can look at uh, Michigan, who has already banned it, and see how their state flagships lack a st astounding number of Black and Latino students. The one thing that really is, is making me sad, I'll, I'll just say today, is that my identity has to be my race, the, you know, the struggles that I've gone through, the tr trauma I've gone through as an African-American woman in the United States. If I were applying to college today, I would have to write about those traumas in my Common Up essay. I would have to write about those traumas and those very hard experiences for admissions officers to accept the overwhelming truth that we all know, which is that it is hard to be a Black person in America. And I don't think that's fair. And Bumi, that's the point John Carl was making moments ago, that students might now be forced to write about uh, their experiences or about particular experiences that perhaps they might not have uh, included in, in their essays uh, because they've, they're not allowed now moving forward to put on that piece of paper a, a key part of their identity. That's, that's what you're saying here? Yeah, I'm saying that like, for example, when I was applying to college last year, I had put down that I'm African American. I had put down that I come from a Nigerian family. Um, and being from the area that I was, everyone who is involved in college admissions knows that I was, by being Black, more likely to experience things such as under resourced schools, which I went to growing up, more likely to have teachers that didn't look like me, which was the case in my school. I did not have a Black teacher. And so I think that when it comes to kids who are applying in the next cycle, it is going to be hard to see themselves as someone outside of their race. I feel like that's what allowed affirmative action by it being limited in the past to just being one factor considered amongst a host of others in a holistic process. It was never going to be the deciding factor after Baki versus UC Davis, I believe, yeah. though many people still believe that it is. And I think that now that students are forced to talk about racial discrimination and their experiences with it, their obstacles with it in their college essays. They're now being known by their race first and by their academics and otherwise other experiences second, because they have to put that in the forefront to prove their experiences through racism in the United States. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.